Without further ado, Let's although do it. we just came back from commercial, there's no a doing. We're getting straight to it. I'm a doing right now, as a matter of fact. Stop stalling, Dave. We got a lot of business to get to with our good friend, the voice of the San Francisco 49ers this Sunday noon. Niners, Eagles, two wins away from a Super Bowl championship. Who will be there? Well, we'll find out, and Greg will tell us all about it. Good morning, Mr. Papa. Boy, they should hire you at Fox to do the, uh, the voiceover <laughs> for the T's. Who's that animated, that animated football player they got? What's his name? Cletus? Cletus. Cletus. Yeah. Got, oh, is that the worst ever? <laughs> it's, get rid of Cletus. It's but if Cletus could talk, Dave, that would be, that's how he would sound. <laughs> I'd, be the, I'd be the voice of Cletus. <laughs> oh, we don't want that. We don't want that. Uh, how was your blood pressure during the game last week? I know you're a professional. You have a job to do. I only ask because I know we both very much want this team to win, and I found myself almost palpitating towards the end of the game. It was not enjoyable <laughs> for me. Yeah, pop and palpitating. We don't want that. <laughs> um, I, I was concerned. I mean, the week before in the wild card game, the 49ers were down at halftime by a point, and, and really I was not concerned. I thought I thought they would win the game the whole time. Um, but this one was a little bit different. Dallas was just their their defensive line was just causing a lot of problems, and the 49ers could not could not run the ball in the game. Eleven carries, twenty seven yards. So they had to make adjustments to figure out how to do it, and they did. Uh, that ninety one yard drive, late third quarter into the fourth quarter, McCaffrey touchdown, and then that uh, seven minute and fifty nine second drive, just uh, just outstanding. And that's Kyle. Chris Furster and, you know, figuring out how they want to run and they changed. They went from, you know, left outside zone stretch game to more power and pulling guards and um, gapping them. So I, I, and then going into this game, I think it's kind of similar. You know, you have to figure out how you want to run the ball against the Eagles. And, and um, um, I, I think, I think Philadelphia, I think actually it, it's somewhat easier to run on Philly than it is to run on Dallas. So I think that's going to be where it's all going to start on Sunday. It's how do the 49ers take that figuring out of the Dallas front into this Philly front, which is deeper. You know, Dallas had those two great players. They had, they had a bunch of really good players, but it was mainly Demarcus Lawrence and, and uh, Micah Parsons. Philly's got like nine guys that are coming at you, including, you know, situational guys named Indomit and Sue, mm. who doesn't even start for them. So, uh, but I think that's, that's going to be the whole thing, Dave, is it took them a while to figure out the running game against Dallas. How long will it take them? to figure out how to how to run on Philly scrunch. Absolutely. As we're talking with Greg Papa, the voice of the 49ers. All guests come to you via the Folsom Lake Honda hotline. Folsom Lake Honda, your one-stop Honda shop. Greg, I, I was going to ask you about that run against Philly, how they do it. I mean, Dallas, sideline to sideline speed was great. Parsons is everywhere. Is Philly more physical than Dallas? Maybe that's why if the Niners can get the lanes they want, they might be able to run better? Philly's going to line up in a, in a five-man front, Jason. So Hassan Reddick, Number seven will stand up in a two-point stance. And then their other four guys are all just sweat on the other side is uh, is up sometimes as well. So they're going to come at you in a five-man front. Not four down, five down. And they got big guys in front. You know, Javon Hargrave, Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham, and Dada Kinsu, Linville Joseph, Jordan Davis. Oh, they got Robert Quinn. Uh, that guy had like 18 and a half sacks last year in Chicago. He hardly plays. But he'll mix in. So they're uh, first of all, if you have a five-man front and you got five offensive linemen, it's five on five. It's single block. So, you know, do you need to, to keep Kittle in more against a five-man front to block? What do you do with use check? Um, so, how do you how do you help if uh, McGlinchey's struggling with Hassan Reddick, say? Um, so, so that's that's that. Uh, the Forty Nineers have seen a lot of five-man fronts this year, and even teams that don't play a five-man front play it against Kyle because. You want to stuff the run. So what, what I would like to see them do in this game is uh, break tendency a little bit. Uh, maybe throw on first down in this game. The 49ers are, you know, they're very balanced. Uh, throughout the year, they had about 500 runs and about 500 passes. It was right down the middle. But on first down, first and 10, that's who you are. And the 49ers uh, were like 65% run on first down, very high, one, two, or three in the league all year. Philly knows that, and they're going to come down and try to slam that. So maybe you just, you know, break tendencies and just throw on first down a little bit early in the game. The one thing is watch their corners. They're both very good players. 
Darius Slay, number two, and James Bradbury, number 24. But they play off. They, they give you a soft cushion on the outside. So, you know, we Philly's got this RPO offense. Maybe you let Brock RPO it at the line and just look. If, if those corners are soft enough and they're giving Ayuk, you know, a, a seven-yard slant right in front of Bradbury, give him the ball and let's see if Bradbury can tackle him. So uh, they, they are going to be tough to run on, they're, 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 and they're very aggressive, and they're big and powerful, and they, they come at you in waves. But um, I, I think the interesting thing is that, that you know, the, the, the chess match between Kyle and their D.C., Jonathan Gannon, and uh, don't be predictable with the run, and may, maybe just see, let's just see the run pass balance on first down in this game, especially early in the game. Greg Papa, voice of the Niners, joining us. We had, being a Sacramento guy, we have Eric Armstead on uh, each week throughout the playoffs, and we talked to him about the Dak Prescott mm. shove, whatever it was, in the end zone. And he had mentioned this a little bit after the game, Greg. I know you heard it, that he was, in the back of his head, he was worried about getting a roughing the passer call. He, it was a little indecisive. He obviously wishes he'd have pancaked him in retrospect. And it made me think, Greg, just I'm curious as to your thoughts with the way the refereeing is right now, the way the rules are, I should say, right now, and the referees executing them. It really did make me a little bit angry that these guys have to have that in the back of their head. And Eric really missed what should have been a game ending safety. He's got to get it out of his head, Dave. Yeah. But that, that, was a, that was a terrible mistake he made. I don't I mean, it, it, Elijah Mitchell stepping out of bounds. Yeah. It was really not a smart play. Yeah. That was, but he's a young player, but he should not have done it. The game was over. He should not have done that. So I wasn't a fan of that one. And then whatever Eric's got in his brain, even if you take a personal foul on that point of the game, they're on the goal line. Yeah. Uh, the, the pros versus the cons. He, he could have had him for a safety in the end zone. I mean, that's <sighs> you can't worry about that. Now, I, I understand, but, but where it comes into this game more is this quarterback sliding. That, that's the point here, because they have had problems with personal fouls. Go to Justin Fields, first game of the year in Chicago, Dre Greenlaw. The one on, you know, Justin Herbert, Dre Greenlaw gets kicked out of the game. This quarterback, when he runs, and that's the whole story of the game, is dealing with this guy and his running and that mesh point to give to the back and the pull. And when he runs it, he RPOs it, all that. But then when he gets out, and he, unlike Brock, he gets out to his right. He finds an escape hatch going right. He's not fast. He's closer to a 4'6 than a 4'5. He's like Russell Wilson that way. He's big, strong, powerful. He knows he's decisive on where he runs. You hear the term, you know, put your foot in the ground. And watch this guy put his foot in the ground. He'll put that right foot in the ground and just change direction and come right at you. So he's powerful. But what he, what he does, he doesn't take big hits like Russell. You never see him just get lit up, except the one time in Chicago when Tevis Gibson you know, buried him on his right shoulder, and he's not over that. So keep that in mind as this game goes on. He's got a bad shoulder. But when he, he does go down, he, he runs out of bounds, he slides. So the personal fouls that concern me in this game are, you know, Jimmy Ward sliding up, uh, you know, late in the game against, uh, against Seattle and taking a personal foul with Geno Smith. You can't do that. You know, when he goes down, when he gives him, when he goes feet first, he's tackled. You don't need to tackle him. Once he goes speed, any any runner, not even a you know a, a, wide, a wide receiver or running back, when they give themselves up, they're done. You don't have to touch them; they're done. So do not touch him. So I think that's more than anything in this game is when he gives himself up as a runner. Don't give him fifteen free yards by by a dumb personal foul penalty. Greg, as far as concerns for D'Amico Ryan's about Jalen Hurts' running ability, do you think he's more concerned by those kind of designed runs that Philly you know may may call for him just out of read and reaction type thing or the improv runs that, Hey, it's, it's good coverage downfield and he takes off. What, what's a bigger concern you think for the Niners defense? All of it. He does it all. <laughs> he does it all. I mean, they, they do everything. It's, and the, the, the fulcrum of the game is going to be that mesh point read where he takes the shotgun snap and he's got it back to his side and he reads that, you know, how your ends are crashing. If he gives it or pulls it and then he can pull it and throw it or pull it and run it. But then they've got, They've got all the conventional quarterback runs. If you want to run Cam Newton, quarterback power, quarterback sweep, quarterback draw, they run everything. This guy's a big, strong runner. His, last year, he was mainly a runner. Now he's become a, a, a very solid pocket quarterback, but he's a runner. 
and he's a dangerous runner. So, um, and then, you know, do you have to play more zone in this game than man? If you're, if you're churning and running with receivers, Jason downfield, and you lose sight on him, and then he just runs. I mean, Jack Prescott's not the runner. This guy is not even close. And that fourth and four that he ran against the Niners last week coming out of a two-minute warning, that, that's a play Jalen Hurts will stick that in the end zone on you. So you got to be careful with this guy. So it's all of that. Um, and then they just do, you know, I saw, you know, Indianapolis played a break. You know, they were crashing down with their ends and beating them up, and they weren't scoring. And then at the end of the game, coming out of a two-minute warning, he does one of those design quarterback draws, just takes a snap, everybody fans out, and he just runs right to the middle of the defense for a touchdown. Nobody touched him. So it's tough because they spread you out. It's a spread offense. It's a college offense where he's in the gun, back to the side. They go two by two, two receivers left, two right, outside the numbers. So they're using the whole width of the field, and that opens it up for everything they do, not just him running, but Devontae Smith, A.J. Brown, Dallas Goddard, all of it. But the one thing, people, when they talk about the 49er defense, they use the word physical. They're physical. And they are. They're physical. But the one thing they don't, I don't appreciate enough is how fast this defense is. They are fast. And it struck me, it it does all the time, but that Thursday night game in Seattle, when you played the Sunday before, you may be a little slower, and they're just flying. I mean, they're they're linebackers with Warner and Greenlaw and uh, Aziz and, you know, the the, 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 the D-line, they play a wide nine. It's up the field. They got fast guys. You know, many he was fast. Straight Jackson, Nick Bosa, Ebukam, they're fast. So I just love this matchup, not just the physicality, of Philly, because I think their old line is more smart than physical. But I think the one element, because they they want to spread you out and use their speed and space against you, I think they're going to be shocked. Not they know how physical the Niners are. I think they're going to surprise when they have to line up and play them. How fast this defense is this Sunday at noon, Greg Papa, wow. the 49ers. Woo. It's on two away from the first ring since 1994. And Greg Papa is going to tell the story. Love it, buddy. Drop the mic, Cletus. Drop the mic, Cletus. <laughs> nailed it. Have a great call, and we will talk to you I'm next week. Have fun. Okay. I'm going to have fun. All right. Have a talk blast. You See you, buddy. Bye-bye. That's Greg Papa. I'm, let's go. Let's play now. I am so ready. Yes.